Are you familiar with 17 principles of effective instruction? Most teachers are, but not everyone is. And if you are familiar with them, how have they changed your practice? So on the screen here, you've got some short codes from me. So let me just put these full size for a moment. Um, the original papers on the right hand side, not many teachers have read this. Most people are familiar with the one on the left. Um, now, I came across the one on the left in 2015. It was published in 2012. The original paper was published in 1982 on the right-hand side. And these six principles have evolved into the 17 principles that most teachers across England are familiar with today. Um, distilled from decades of research, they offer a robust framework for improving teacher effectiveness. So this is what they look like. So you could pause the video here and think straight away, Gosh, what do these look like in early years or in year 11 in math, English or science? And this is a great CPD discussion. It allows all teachers to reflect on the principles within the classroom and lead significant improvements to student engagement and achievement in their class. So, for example, number eight here on the screen, think aloud and model steps. Well, what does that look like in lots of different subjects, different points in the lesson? and with different year groups. And what I do in my slide deck, so I'm working with a school in London next week, and one of the activities we'll be doing is looking at the 17 principles and then if, squeezing them into something that's more memorable so we can be guided by the principles but really make a difference to our practice. So three blogs on my site that I've written, and you may have read one or two. The one on the left is when I first published about the research. I first wrote about the principles in Mark Plan Teach in 2017. And then seeing how it was, in some respects, bastardized across the profession, turned into ugly checklists. I then looked into the evolution of, of, of Rose and Shine from 1982 onwards, that middle blog post. And the pitfalls. So all with all research, there's often some pitfalls. So I wrote about that on the right-hand side. Um, and yes, they've influenced many teaching and learning policies, particularly secondary schools. And you know they, they continue to shape lots of people's practice, but it's essential to understand how the recommendations have evolved over time. And while these principles, um, in, in some respects, um, are robust and research-informed guidance, it's crucial to examine them, uh, you know, the downsides and limitations. So as an exercise, I get colleagues to squeeze the 17 principles into 10. That's a bit more memorable. On the video here, you've got a suggestion from me. Uh, and these are either near, near, here or there in terms of a, a correct answer. At least it, 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 it's a starting process. And then the next step is, well, how can you turn it into four guided principles that change your practice? And that's what we really want to get down to, a change of behaviors um, so these would be my suggestions, explain question practice feedback. And when we underpin these by Rose and Shine's principles, we end up with those 17 principles that are underpinning these four pillars. Now, I can remember these four principles, and they make a brilliant teaching and learning routine. So one piece of advice I'd give for all school leaders out there looking at Rose and Shine as a CPD exercise is, and in Rose and Shine's words himself, it would be a claim to, to translate his resources and ideas across all subjects when we try to chase consistency across the school. Um, so you got the 17 principles from me, the QR code, the short codes here, and the short codes to the original paper. I guess in summary, we're looking to avoid checklists, avoid the applicability of the principles into lots of different subjects. And as ever, these 17 principles don't factor in anything to do with metacognition and students taking action for themselves. I guess what you should consider is how do you adapt these principles to suit your own context, content, uh, uh, content and students? Um, how can you focus on that retrieval, check for understanding a lot more? And how can you be flexible given different periods of the year, different students, anxiety, SEND, and so on and so forth. So I hope it helps. Uh, bye for now.